Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. On the program today, we're going to be talking about how you can boost your income little by little or perhaps a lot, especially in an economy where people are unsure of whether or not they're going to be walking into work the next day, if a business is going to stay open, or things just aren't going to work out too well. We can always find an extra way that we can get by and do a little bit better, perhaps even great. On the book today, we're going to be talking about a book called Internet Profits. It's the world's leading experts who reveal how to profit online. And our guest today, who's been on the program before, Mr. Steve Olsher. Steve, thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 Radio program. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on again. Now, you brought together experts, pretty much, who have found ways to go online uh, in specialized areas, I guess. So you kind of have a nice potpourri of where people can kind of decide you know, this kind of really suits me. How did you come across these different people to do these different things when it came to the Internet? You know, it's interesting. My my work is focused on helping people nicheitize, which is all about identifying their niche and learning how to monetize it. And so the first step of that process is being able to identify your what. And so that is the question, which is what is your what? What is that one thing that your soul is compelled to do. And once you understand what that is, you then need the how. How do you share that gift with the world and how do you monetize it so you can make both a fortune and a difference sharing your unique gifts with the world? And as an online veteran, I've literally been online uh, in various forms for 20 years. We actually launched on CompuServe's Electronic Mall back in 1993. And yet I sat here uh, just a couple years ago when I first got the idea for the book and realized that I really don't understand how the Internet works. And, and <laughs> even though I'm an, I'm an expert, so to speak, I mean, there's so much more for me to learn and so many things that I'm not doing. And so I proactively started asking around and following others who seem to have a pretty good following and knowledge about exactly what to do and how to do it online. And the same names kept popping up over and over again. And ultimately, I said, you know, these are the folks that I've got to contact, uh, really not only for, for me to, to understand how to increase my business, but to, to create a, a comprehensive resource that encapsulates everything that they're doing uh, in a way that almost becomes encyclopedia S, which the book has been referred to, uh, that certainly covers uh, quite a bit of ground. But just to clarify, it's not an anthology where they write their own chapters. It is based on the interviews that I'm working with and studying alongside uh, these experts over the course of a year. And it's, it's then, uh, shall we say, broken down into my findings. Uh, that is uh, set up in a chapter-by-chapter -chapter way that covers, uh, as you said, 25 different topics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, too, because when people think about online, you know, and the potential of online profiting, most of us just sort of kind of hit the surface, you know. The idea is you get a website, you throw it up online, and you, I think sometimes people have the attitude you kind of sit back and you just, sort of wait for people to come to you, but there's more, a lot more to it than that. And actually, as yeah. you read through these stories, it almost seems too easy when you realize what's being revealed to you, but there's some work involved. Well, there's always work involved, and you've got to be willing to work to get any results in any field and in any way, shape, or form that, that right. allows you to create the lifestyle and income that you desire. But... I mean, the reality is that it's doable. It's just, it, it's a mystery for a lot of people in terms of how you drive traffic, in terms of how you cultivate sales, in terms of how you really carve out a niche for yourself. But the reality is that you just simply need the right information. And it's almost embarrassing because the book is so chock full of very hands-on ways to implement uh, a specific teachings around various subjects to, to get the results that you desire. That I'm almost embarrassed to say that I think I probably implement maybe 5 to 6 percent uh, of everything <laughs> that's in that book right now. Right. <laughs> I know it's funny when you think about a day and an age when it seems that easy where you can really launch a business from your home. I mean, you can literally 
stay at home and, and you can and you can do very very well and all the tools and all the apps when it comes to even getting involved in doing it you think to yourself I have too many choices I don't even know where to start and why is it that people sometimes can just jump online and they can start doing what they do with the same yep. tools that are right at your fingertips and they can do so well and you think to yourself where am I missing the boat at? Tell us how you came to compile what you did here in the book. Yeah, you know, it is interesting because that if you build it, they will come mentality really has uh, has crossed over online. Uh, and the fact is that uh, at last count, I believe there was uh, roughly a million new websites that are created every day. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is you're going to be lucky if, if Two people find you, let alone two million. So, it's uh, it's not nearly as easy as people think to be found online. But as I said, uh, the good news is that there are people who are willing to share and have gone through the trials and tribulations of what they've done well and, and not so well. And that's certainly what we cover uh, in this book. But reality for me says that. The key is really understanding what it is that you're compelled to do. Again, we go back to the question of what is your what? What is that one thing mm -hmm. that you were born to do? And create a product, a business, a service around that as opposed to chasing these commodity-driven opportunities that, frankly, are all about the money and, uh, and there's usually no love in it. Mm -hmm. Now, that, there's the, the key you talk about when people become motivated because it seems easy, it seems quick, and it seems to be very profiting. But there are a lot of people out there when you go online with that motivation that are more than happy to kind of take money out of your wallet. What should pe people be aware of when it comes to something like that? Yeah, and, and it's a great point. I mean, certainly there's little difference online when you look at the snake oil salesman of the past to, to what's going on with some of these sites. And, and clearly, if it seems too good to be true, then the answer is, of course, it is. Mm -hmm. So anyone who tells you that this stuff is simple or anyone who tries selling you a bill of goods that says that in three months' time you'll be making X number of dollars, you've got to really take that with a grain of salt because it's just not nearly that easy. Now, don't get me wrong. It's possible but it's possible for one-tenth of one percent of those who buy it. And you've got to be almost, uh, you know, we just had the Powerball of 500 plus million dollars, right? I mean, you, you've got a, a pretty slim chance of seeing those types of results. It can happen, uh, mm -hmm. but you've got to be really wary of, uh, of what you buy and why you're buying it. Now, the thing that's really interesting, too, is sometimes people really need to change their modalities when it comes to, Working online, for instance, you know, it's one thing if you're standing in a booth at a trade show and you're selling a product and, you know, obviously you've got to kind of recoup your overhead so you price it, you know, accordingly. But online it's a different story because there it's about traffic so you can really break things down. And you give an interesting example, for instance, of a guy by the name of Yannick and how he chunks things down where you can take, for instance, a course that could be, let's say $2,500, and you can break it down into, into modules, which is pretty interesting because it allows people to keep coming back to what it is that you're doing. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, there's, there's a couple different strategies at work there. So number one is you want to be able to make your work affordable for people. I mean, obviously, you've got the Tiffany's of the world that uh, – really position themselves as, as, as being ultra luxury. But at the same token, you can go into Tiffany and you can buy a charm for 20 bucks and still get the little blue box. So it's not, uh, it's not always the case where you have to price yourself out of the game simply because you want to focus on a particular market. I mean, I get that strategy. But at the same token, you can make a lot more money by making what you do accessible to many more people. So let's say, for instance, you've got a, a program that you created, which has, let's just call it 10 modules, and you sell that for $499, $499. If, in fact, you then broke it down and made it accessible to people who didn't have $499, and maybe they're just simply interested in one particular module, if you sold that module for $79, well, obviously, your margins have now vastly increased. It didn't cost you any more or any less to create that module because you already had it. You just broke it off. 
And so ultimately, if someone liked the one that you did and ends up buying nine others, well, that four ninety nine product just became worth seven hundred and ninety dollars to you. So I mean, there's there's definitely a strategy to that, but ultimately, it's about establishing what so many refer to as the no like and trust factor, which online is absolutely key. Where you've got to develop that long before you try to sell someone a bill of goods or any sort of product. Mm -hmm. Now you talk too very consistently about how people need to sort of carve out their niche or to find out their what and their why. So really, online, although it makes it to where location really isn't as important as it was in the past, you still need to create a good location for people to come to. Talk about certain strategies for our listeners, how they can begin to, once they've launched their website, they've discovered their what and their why, how they can begin to, I guess, drive traffic or you know, collect those eyes and ears and perhaps the loyalty that they're looking for when it comes to doing business. Yeah, and, and I've got to tell you, number one, it's not as simple as people think, but it's not impossible. So right. what you really have to think about, and for most of us who don't have big budgets, although the Internet certainly has leveraged, leveled the playing field in terms of allowing even the smallest of folks to compete against the big boys, it still usually takes some degree of funds to get the type of notoriety, get the type of exposure that you want. But here are uh, a handful of ways that I have found that you can create some pretty decent traffic without spending a dime. Now, the most powerful one, and number one on the list, is what we refer to as joint ventures. And so the idea is someone has the audience that you want. I don't know who it is because I don't know particularly what your industry is, but in my industry, where I cross over from personal development to Internet marketing, there are players that obviously have a, a pretty good following, whether it be someone like a, a Bob Proctor or a Tony Robbins or a Deepak Chopra or whoever it might be. Those are the guys that you want to start reaching out for or probably start lower on a totem pole and end up there. But the idea is they can't create enough products and services to satisfy their audience. So they are always looking for products of value, something that adds value for their subscribers. And so the idea is create something that they find of interest, approach them with the opportunity to work together, and if in fact you then cultivate that relationship, odds are good that at some point they may introduce your products and services to their audience. So, I mean, joint ventures can be extremely powerful. And it's one of the fastest ways to build up your list without having one. So that's, that's certainly number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, and again, these are all low-cost, no-cost ways of, of driving traffic. Number two is there's a, there's a number of uh, forums out there like Yahoo Answers where people need answers to their questions. And so Quora is another one, and, and there, there are multiple answer-oriented sites. But the idea is that if you have expertise in a particular field and someone has a question, then scour those sites and start figuring out the answers to their questions, provide your email or your website and your signature line, and you'll be amazed how quickly you can get people to recognize who you are, and since they're appreciative of your finding answers for them, well, then they're going to go ahead and probably click on your link, and it's a great way to start. And you know, there's, there's tons of others, not the least of which are, are direct links and blog comments and keyword research and press releases, etc. But it's all of the stuff that, uh, that I'm mentioning. It really costs you absolutely nothing out of pocket uh, to do. And actually, one of my favorites is Twitter. Mm -hmm. You know, Twitter is really, really good. And if you go to Twitter.com and then do forward slash uh, the pound sign and search, you can literally search for what people are talking about. So if you work with people who hate their jobs, if you type in hate my job, <laughs> I mean you could find all of the people who have posted those words in their tweets in the last, uh, I, think it, I think it goes back over a year now. So. Yeah, it's a very inexpensive way to figure out who is speaking the language, and ultimately that's what you want to do is enter the conversation that's taking place in their mind. So it's, uh, again, just a handful of very low-cost ways to drive traffic, but they're very effective. 
Mm-hmm. Now, what is it about social media that you think sometimes people may be overdoing it when it comes to its use versus using it effectively? Yeah, I mean, so, social media, honestly, is the biggest distraction that I think is taken over our, our world in, in decades. I mean, it's, it's in a lot of ways it's worse than TV. Hey, you know, the truth is, too, Steve, is I still haven't really used Facebook too much. I mean, here I'm in the media business, but we do pretty well driving and getting traffic. But, you know, it, it, you take a look at something like a Facebook or a Twitter, and you get on something like that, and I still need to, I guess, find ways to use it, but I want to use it effectively and sincerely. It's either you've got to listen to how somebody has baked a muffin or taken a shower, things that you really don't want to spend too much time really reading about, much less friending somebody about. But at the same time, you don't want to overdo the fact that you're trying to market something and trying to sell to people at the same time. But you get that feeling sometimes when you go to these kinds of tools. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so that's where it really comes down to adding value first right. and developing a relationship with those folks that, that may see your fees, that may read you know, your tweets or, or see you on LinkedIn or whatever it might be. But reality is that you've got to add value to their life. And telling me that you ate chicken and waffles for breakfast really doesn't matter. I mean, I don't see how that adds any value. I mean, <laughs> might, might, it might make me hungry, but, you know, if, if you're I can make a waterproof muffin while I'm taking a shower. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, if, if you're a chef and you teach me how to make outstanding chicken and waffles. Well, now that, that, now that <laughs> adding value. But don't just show me a picture of what you ate at the Hash House of Go-Go, although I will say that they do have the best chicken and waffles I've ever had. But that's right. a different story. <laughs> uh, you know, you just find it amazing yet, you know, you take a look at, you know, social media and you can see how people think, here's, you know, that shortcut, for instance. It could be somebody, you know, trying to sell something who, you know, a product or a service, and, it goes back to the days of the blast facts. Oh, here's a way that I can reach people without having to feel the pain of rejection. And, you know, it's really not that much different. The tool is different, but your approach is the same, and you're still going to get the same result. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's funny, the blast facts. God, I remember that. <laughs> that's a good one. I'm going to have to use that in one of my upcoming presentations. I remember that. <laughs> Now, I, I love the stories that you have in here, but most importantly for people to know when it comes to, for instance, the book Internet Profits is that you really had a nice blend of bringing in the tools from the different experts. But at the same time, this really serves as a, a, a wonderful sort of how to, I'm trying to think of the right word, like, like a self-help and inspiration book, you know, so the stories become inspiring in and of themselves to where you think, you know, yeah, I can go online, but you really make it where it's a tool. But you still have to be a good craftsman to know how that tool is used. So yeah. talk about how you decided to blend it this way, because you can pick up a book like this and you can be sort of, I guess, misled to think, okay, here's another technical book by a so-called, you know, online geek guru, you know, that I'm going to have to spend all this time. But there's a lot more to it where it really inspires individuals to say to themselves, you know, wow, I didn't think about it this way before, and this looks like this could work for me, and I'm going to give it a try. You know, I feel inspired to take that first step or that next step. Yeah, you, you know, it's interesting. The, the book has been called a lot of things. <laughs> some, some good, some not so good. But I, I don't At least not a paperweight. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> but I don't pay attention to the haters. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's got 95 five-star reviews on Amazon right now mm -hmm. and a couple of the others. But, you know, for the most part, people really do like it because it's interesting. No one's ever called it a self-help or inspiration book. I haven't heard that, but I could certainly see how that would be the case. I mean, Jay Levinson, the father of guerrilla marketing, called it the best marketing book that he's read in over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so it really is a business how-to, a marketing how-to type of book with the medium being the Internet, but it's more about general 
business practices right. and honing mm-hmm. in on what your message is and how to make a significant dent in your market. And, and so one of the ways that, that I alluded to earlier is, is in terms of adding value, it's really important to, to look at that as the starting point for everything that you do. And so that's one of the reasons why I actually give Internet Profits away for free. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but if you, if you go to internetprofits.com, so that's P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S, so it's spelled in the biblical sense, internetprofits.com forward slash free, you can actually grab a free copy of that book. And, and that really is, the exact process that I encourage people to, to look at, which is how do you get your message across in as close to one click as possible? Mm-hmm. And that's where a lot of people struggle online. They've got these, uh, these websites that try to do way too much. <laughs> no and so, kidding. <laughs> and so if you go to Steve Olsher, O-L-S-H-E-R.com, you'll see exactly what I mean, where it's very simple. It's Tell me what you want in terms of how can I help you. You click a radio button and you opt in and you receive the information that you want. Mm -hmm. And so that really is one of the key takeaways here is that if you're going to be uh, really trying to build something online, it's it's imperative that you look at how you get people what they want and as as little number of steps as possible and ideally in just one click. I mean, that's that's where you want people to be. And mm-hmm. don't make it hard for people. Don't make it too complicated. Just get them as close to one click as you possibly can because the website should only do one of two things. It should either capture opt-in information, meaning the name and email address of someone who comes to your site, or it should immediately sell a product or service. So it's, most people get that wrong. I, I don't, you know, again, there's a lot of different ways to do it. It's just my opinion, but I have seen and now in, in having studied this for, for as long as I've studied it, that it's just it's absolutely imperative to be clear on the fact that if your website is not doing one of those two things, it's probably doing way too much, and that's going to paralyze people from doing anything. You know, one of the things, too, Steve, is many years ago we started producing our, a newsletter online. You know, it's absolutely free. And I started thinking about this uh, a couple of years after, and I thought, well, just think about when somebody offers you a newsletter. What is your first instinct? You know, what comes to mind, even though it's free? You know, a newsletter seems something that's time-intensive. It takes, you know, effort. Uh, Regardless if it's free, it sounds like something you're just going to throw away, a Mm -hmm. newsletter, right? And so an idea came across, and I had kind of changed that, and I thought, well, this will make a difference. And sometimes it's just a matter of what you word and how long it is. Just like you said, you want to keep it simple. And so I changed it to exclusive updates. And all of a sudden, you know, you start getting all these emails and this traffic, and you think, just on that, I'm doing the same thing, but I just changed what it was. And people all of a sudden just start (laughs) jumping on board. And just like you're saying here, Steve, you keep it simple. And I don't know why, when you take a look at some of these websites, people have to make them so flashy. You're not going to a drive-in theater. As you said, what is your reason for having this? It's to collect information or to sell something, really. I mean, that's what it's all about. Absolutely. And so your your rewording, your semantical change, if you will, uh, is, is really then speaking to the consumer, the reader, as opposed to speaking to you. And so that's a, it's a really important, subtle shift that most people don't quite get. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's always about your client. It's always about your subscriber as opposed to being about you. And one of the easiest ways to honor that relationship is to keep whatever you write really brief. I mean, my... My understanding of the industry now has, has really clarified uh, that, that, that most people have what they call short attention span theater. I mean, right. it's just they, they want it now. If you're writing more than 200 words, odds are really good that it's not going to be read. It's going to fall on deaf ears. So I mean, you've almost got to look at it in terms of uh, maybe five to ten tweets mm-hmm. insofar as the length. Because that's about where you start to lose people. That's where I think Twitter has become 
Steve, a very valuable tool is to teach people how to say a lot by saying very little. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it's it's an incredible skill, and mm-hmm. it's very very difficult to say anything of substance in 144 characters. Mm-hmm. But those who can do it can translate that into a newsletter that instead of being a thousand words can be a hundred words and be equally as good. I mean, I remember when I wrote my first book. I created what I thought was going to be the next Bible. I mean, this thing was going to sell more than any other book in the world, and it was 80,000 words. It was a diatribe of love. I mean, 80,000 words of brilliance. And I sent it to my editor, and he basically said, you know what, let me uh, work on this for about five or six months. Five or six months, he came back to me with a 40,000-word document. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah, this was a great paperweight, Steve, but now it's yeah. functional. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, very exciting stuff here. Uh, Internet Profits is the title of the book. It's the world's leading experts reveal how to profit online, which we haven't revealed too much because I feel that we would do an injustice by revealing too much when people really should dive into this again. What I like about it is it gets back to nuts and bolts practicality of what you're in business in the first place to do. It's to improve the lives of others, whether it's through a product or it's a service that you're trying to offer to people. And why not actually, you know, make a living and profit well from something like that? Because when you take a look, for instance, at YouTube, what is this? It's like the second leading search engine now, from what I understand. Yeah, Most do you know what the top four search engines are, by the way? What are they? No, you tell me. What do you think they are? Uh, my 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 first guess, obviously, YouTube is one, but Google would be the second one. Yep, what okay. do you think is three and four? Uh, yeah, and these are just guesses, would be Yahoo, and then would be Facebook. Mm, okay, so number three, believe it or not, is Amazon. Okay. And number four is iTunes. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. So you don't underplay the power of, of Amazon and iTunes because when well, people go there, they're looking to buy, and those are the kinds of, that's the kind of traffic you want. Right, exactly. And the reason I wanted to bring, you know, for instance, up YouTube is the reason people use YouTube as a search engine is because they're learning or wanting to know how to do something. And if you just know that alone, what could you provide as a how-to for people that they'll just, you know, clamor, cling, and stick like glue to what it is that you have to offer? And that's what I love about, you know, the things that you talk about, the practicality about how a person can profit when it comes to online service. Yeah, and uh, and again, just to, to clarify here, it's uh, it's entirely possible to, to do very, very well online. But ultimately, what I encourage people to do is start with one or two very specific tactics for driving traffic and just nail those first. Mm-hmm. And that will give you the opportunity to really see what's working or what's not working. And it's, it's easy to try to do everything. But again, if you can just nail something like Google AdWords or if you can nail something like uh, like getting people to link to your site and finding uh, and finding partners that are in your space. Uh, again, Google AdWords costs money. Finding people to link to your site costs nothing. But the idea is that you need to have uh, or, or a test, a sample, a pool from which to really work from so that you can see if, in fact, what you are doing now is effective. Because ultimately, a lot of people spend way too much money on their sites and they never recoup because... It just uh, it's not functional. It doesn't give people what they want when they get there. Mm. It's amazing how basic you can keep a site, and people go, well, that site's ugly, and you're, but I'm doing very, very well with it because yeah. it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. I'd like to actually revisit this again. Uh, again, Internet Profits is the book. The world's leading experts reveal how to profit online. Our guest today, Mr. Steve Ulster. Steve, go ahead and give out your website and let people know how they can find out more about this. I appreciate that. So the easiest place to, to learn more about what I'm doing is Steve Olsher, O-L-S like Sam, H-E-R.com, steveolsher.com. And there you can grab a free copy of Internet Profits and, uh, and other valuable resources uh, that will definitely help you 
uh, in a variety of arenas, but uh, but it's all free. So definitely check out SteveOlster.com and grab what you need. Right on, SteveOlster.com. Steve, thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. What a great book. Absolutely. Thanks so much again for having me. You bet. We also encourage you, the listeners out there, to join us at Beyond50RadioBlogspot.com and be sure to find out how you can find out more about this as well as other wonderful resources, just Beyond 50. Just type that in. You'll find us right there, America's Talk Show for Baby Boomers. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 radio program. And remember, live your day past halfway.